All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about my most carried knives for 2022. Now, we're doing this a little bit after 2022, but these are the four most carried knives, and I wanted to break it down into essentially um, the four into four essential quarters for, you know, each each part of the year or each quarter of the year, which was my most carried knife. So that's essentially how this is broken down. These are the kind of top four, if you will. And now let's jump right into it. So the first one, of course, is going to be the Benchmade 273 Mini Adamus. Now this is a knife that I don't necessarily love the most and kind of wish it was a little bit better or at least had a better um, locking bar or axis lock, but it is a pretty good knife and overall it does work pretty well. And this honestly was what found its way most of the time in my pocket for the beginning of the year, the first quarter of the year. Okay, moving into the next quarter of the year and what saw a lot of carry and action over the summer was the Strider SNG. Now, some people may not like this knife or, you know, uh, opinions notwithstanding, this thing actually performed and served me very well and I really liked it for an outdoor kind of backup blade. Of course, I was always rocking primary blades, whether it was something like my Chris Reed Pacific or Bushcraft or Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, you know, those were kind of my go-to outdoor knives, but the Strider SNG ended up being the pocket knife of choice. And that's primarily due to its tanky nature, tanky and very rigid build quality. And realistically, while the Strider is not a cheap knife at all, especially the SNG or really any of them, this is a really tanky folder and it's tanky, but it isn't really too heavy of a profile. So that is what I really like about the SNG and why it ended up getting carried when I was doing a lot of outdoor. All right, moving into the next blade in the third quarter of the year is the XM18 by Hinderer. Now this is the full size XM18. I do have a smaller one and it does actually see quite a bit of carry, but for you know really wanting a knife or choosing something to throw in my pockets, the full sized three and a half inch XM18 is what got it done. And I really do love this blade. It is so smooth. Um, it is a really nice knife and not only that i love the purple on it i loved the um, blade shape and blade steel for that matter and really this knife just came together for me as a blade that i really did enjoy and like so that's why i saw so much pocket time when i got it and it honestly still does see quite a bit of pocket time it's also a really good size for me i love this you know uh, three and a half inch blade and i like how i can choke up on it get a really good grip if i want to or choke back and still have an excellent grip too so that is the so that's the three and a half inch xm18 and mine of course as i've said in many videos is run on skiff ball bearings and does have aftermarket scales and liner um, so yeah that is the uh, xm18 by hinderer knives all right next one up is the Emerson Minicom. Now this one is going into the fourth quarter or the final of the year. Um, this was the blade that I chose to carry a lot. And part of it was because I really think the pocket ability of the Minicom is great. It is a very carryable size. It has a three and a quarter inch blade and it really is quite pocket friendly. Not only that though, I've wanted an Emerson for a long time and I actually managed to pick up a couple Emersons in one go, but the Minicom really stuck out to me primarily because kind of like the last one or the last knife I share, showcased, um, I am a sucker for recurved blades and the Minicom has a very deeply recurved blade, which is something I love. And I do like the Minicom and Commander style, whether that's the ergonomics and handle or blade shape as a whole. I do like the Commander and I'm pretty partial to it. And I just think the Minicom is the more pocketable kind of or pocket friendly version of the Commander. So that is what drew me to it. In addition though to this is a 2009 vintage Emerson. So it's not super, super old. It's not, you know, early 2000s, but um, it still is pretty old for me. And uh, I really like that. It's a nice older knife to throw in the collection and it certainly has seen its use, but it really hasn't um, been used 
just too, too terribly hard. And so, yeah, still has a pretty good edge. There is one slight nick, as you guys can probably see right there. Um, but aside from that, it is a really solid user and it has been, like I said, really pocket friendly and that's why I've been carrying it. I do alternate with its lanyard on and off. It does have like a little range of pace speed lanyard, but uh, today I'm rocking it without that. So that is the uh, blade that is going into the fourth quarter or in the fourth quarter, my most carried knife. And so really do like it. It's a really cool uh, blade. And I just like the kind of um, age of it and what it is. You know, I've wanted an Emerson for a long time. So picking one up finally is what got me excited. Anyways, guys, that pretty much rounds out this year as far as knives go. Um, I've used quite a few knives, and of course, these are not, you know, solely the only knives that I've EDC'd. I do have a bunch. I think a really good honorable mention is the um, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I was going to pick this up in the, around the third quarter, but uh, this guy is really cool. The Cutlery Shop exclusive version. Um, yeah, it's in CPM Rex 45. Definitely an honorable mention, I think, because this one has seen a lot of pocket time itself. But uh, these are really the core knives that throughout the year saw the most pocket carry for their respective um, times and time frames um, as a whole. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.